The U.S. media system is basically broken down into three tiers of corporations. The first tier are the huge giants. These include Viacom, AOL, Time Warner, Disney, News Corporation, uh, Sony, uh, Vivendi. Uh, the next tier of companies is one notch down. These are the companies like Comcast or General Electric, uh, the major newspaper giant chains like the New York Times, Knight Ritter, Tribune Company would be in that second tier. This third tier is, though, hundreds of thousands of very small companies uh, that sort of round out the system and do the stuff that the big guys don't find profitable, uh, that fill some local niche. Uh, you know, but if you look at the numbers, you say, well, there are hundreds of thousands of media companies, but that's misleading. Uh, there's really only a couple dozen that dominate the system. Journalism is one of the central problems that face a democratic society, because to have a democratic society, you need to have a vibrant, healthy journalism. It's axiomatic. It's the, it's the cornerstone of democratic theory. And what you need from that journalism is a feisty, rigorous accounting of people in power and people who want to be in power. They have to be held accountable so people know what they're doing. You need to have a wide range of opinions on the important issues of the day so people can formulate their own opinions. And you need to have a way to get the truth to come out. So there's some way to check for lies and to get factual accuracy to emerge. The corporations that now own our news media that increasingly brought them into their massive empires realize that giving journalists the autonomy to make professional decisions is bad business. It's much better business to hold your news division to a fierce accounting, to make it generate the same sort of profit as your movie division, as your TV division, as your music division. And that means basically fewer resources, less investigative work, less controversial work, more puff pieces, uh, more trivia, more entertainment, more celebrity coverage. And that's exactly what we've got. This has to do with the fact that there is a certain uh, formula for success that they all use in order to keep their stock prices high. And that is a very simple one. It is, on the one hand, to show stuff that's as titillating as possible, to keep those ratings up night after night, while at the same time slashing budgets, cutting costs. Eventually, you have Barbara Walters become a kind of pillar of the news establishment, although she's really basically just a celebrity interviewer. You have a kind of alternative universe with shows like Entertainment Tonight, which use the format of the CBS Evening News to cover the day's celebrity gossip. So what this does is it creates a, a, a kind of a ready market full time for stories that are uh, high on sensationalism and low on information. Winona Ryder is back in court for her shoplifting trial. And so what we get is a much weaker journalism, a journalism that tends towards cover the easy stories about celebrities and royal families, uh, whose idea of balanced political reporting is simply to put a mic in front of a Republican and then get a Democratic opinion, but almost never means going out and then figuring out who's telling the truth, actually doing the journalism of investigating the various claims and telling us what's actually going on. This leads to very serious problems when you get into a situation, for example, like the war we're currently in. With the drumbeat for an attack on Iraq increasing, the Bush administration may finally have the ammunition they've been looking for. The type of war coverage we've seen in the United States is exactly what you'd expect with a system dominated by a handful of very wealthy corporations that benefit by having a, a world run by the United States to make the world profitable for them. To expect those sorts of firms to um, foster journalism that's going to be critical of a, a U.S. Uh, war on terrorism, a U.S. role in the world, is illogical. Now, even if the people at the top of the system were the most civic-minded, decent, rational, humane people in the world, who would never think of interfering with the news operations, even if that were the case, this ongoing concentration of the media would still pose a grave danger to democracy because it would make serious news uh, unlikely. We've had in the past two years enormous scandals with companies like Enron and WorldCom, where the management for years has been ripping off the government, it's been ripping off its workers, consumers. Yet until really the last second, our news media was extolling these companies as sort of the exemplars of the new economy. A healthy journalism could have nipped them in the bud in the mid-90s and could have addressed them. Instead, what we get is a journalism that comes at them very late, and what we're seeing is a journalism that's very hesitant about getting to the roots of these problems. A journalism that's unwilling to look at the real cause, which is the corruption in our political system that made these scandals possible.